Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Universal Telegram. Today we are going to learn about chronic suppurative otitis media in short form called CSOM. Please keep patience till end the video as it takes long time. So now let's begin. So the first one is what is chronic suppurative otitis media? We can get the idea about its name that chronic means long term, suppurative means producing or causing the production of pus and otitis media means inflammation of middle ear. So, the producing or production of pus means suppuration can be seen in middle ear cavity as inflammatory process can be seen as a chronic form. Now, for better understanding, moving forward its definition, so the term chronic suppurative otitis media CSOM is defined as it is inflammation or infection of a part or a whole middle ear cleft characterized by ear discharge and permanent perforation of tympanic membrane. As you can see in a picture, a trapped fluid collect in a middle ear cavity. So, we all know about in otitis media, the station tube become narrow or inflamed. So, the pressure gets too high in middle ear cavity. So, it will leads a tissue damage plus a permanent perforation of tympanic membrane as it is a delicate structure. So, in this, a chronic inflammation of the middle ear plus tissue damage that usually caused by repeated episodes of acute otitis media. We have already discussed about acute otitis media in second part of otitis media. Next, if a fluid persists long term, then it will lead a fluid discharge. It's, it's a foul smell as you can see in a picture. So, what are the reasons, means causes and risk factor of CSOM? So, the first one is history of eustachian tube dysfunction, infectious diseases like measles, adenoid hypertrophy, and cholestatoma. As you can see in a picture, a cholestatoma is an abnormal, non-cancerous skin growth that can develop in the middle section of your ear, behind the eardrum. It may be a birth defect, but it's most commonly caused by repeated middle ear infection. A cholestatoma usually occurs because of poor eustachian tube function in a combination with infection in the middle ear. When the eustachian tube is not working correctly, pressure within the middle ear can pull part of the eardrum the wrong way, creating a sac or cyst that fills with old skin cells. So, there are causes and risk factors of CSOM. Next, there are some triggering factors of CSOM that are middle ear inflammatory mediators, scaring and middle ear remodeling, altered tympanomastoid anatomy, microbial contamination and biofilm formation and eustachian tube dysfunction. Next, so there is a classification of CSOM. So CSOM mainly classified into two types that first one is a tubotympanic type and second one is a anticontrol disease. Moving forward, its first type that is a tubotympanic type, it is further divided into two subtypes that is a tubal type and tympanic type. So, what is tubotympanic type? This is a safe type. This is benign type of chronic suppurative otitis media confined only to the anterior inferior part of the middle ear cleft as you can see in a picture anterior inferior perforation. In moving forward its subtypes, so the first subtype is tubal type, the infection ascend through the eustachian tube and underlying cause of infection lie either in nose, sinuses or the nasopharynx as we know about the eustachian tube is connected with nasopharynx. Second subtype is a tympanic type. The infection reaches the middle ear through a defect in tympanic membrane, usually a central perforation as you can see in a picture. Central perforation can be pinpoint, large, subtotal, total and marginal. Now moving forward, it's a second type of CSOM that is a anticontrol disease. It is a very unsafe or dangerous type. Now in details, it's relating to the middle ear and its antrum. As you can see in a picture, this is unsafe or dangerous type of CSOM confined to posterior inferior part of middle ear. Why it is unsafe or dangerous type? Because the posterior inferior part of middle ear also consists of 
mastoid uh, air cells means a mastoid bone is located just behind the middle ear so what happen if the perforation in a posterior inferior perforation the infection leads to a mastoid air cell which happens in a bony erosion or will leads a mastoid tenderness so it can be called as a unsafe or dangerous type of CSOM in this a chronic negative pressure we have already discussed about negative pressure in a part of otitis media with effusion it leads to an anti-control type of CSOM is characterized by the formation of cholestatoma and the inflammatory granulation tissue which cause erosion of the bone as I told. Next, the, now let's talking about pathophysiology of chronic suppurative otitis media. As you can see a kind of flow chart of chronic pathophysiology of CSOM. Now in details, a chronic suppurative otitis media is initiated by an episode of acute infection as I told. There are likely a number of reasons for the inflammation including AOM, acute otitis media, perforation of tympanic membrane and eustachian tube dysfunction. Eventually, eustachian tube dysfunction leads to negative middle ear pressure that causes tympanic membrane retraction and perforation. The exposure to chronic inflammatory mediator leads to weakening of tympanic membrane while causing mucosal edema. The ongoing inflammation eventually leads to mucosal ulceration and consequently breakdown of epithelial lining. The host attempt at resolving the infection or inflammatory insult manifests as granulation tissue which can develop into polyps within the middle ear space. Long standing negative pressure can damage surrounding bone and ossicle leading to cholestatoma or loss of ossicular continuity. The cycle of inflammation, ulceration, infection and granulation tissue formation may continue destroying surrounding bony margins and ultimately leading to various complication of CSOM. As you can see abscess formation which leads the complication first one is a destroy ossicles and the second one is a purulent exudate in destroy the ossicles leads to osteomyelitic erosion which leads to mastoid air cell erosion and it lead a complication of conductive hearing loss and purulent exudate leads to foul smelling otorrhea. So here it's all about pathophysiology of CSOM. Next. What are the clinical manifestations? So the clinical manifestation of CSOM are first one is a persistent blockage of fullness of ear. Second one is a hearing loss. Third one is a uh, persist deep pain ear in the ear. Why? Just because of a chronic foul smelling ear discharge. Then a loss of balance, vertigo, facial nerve weakness. Then second one is a mastoid tenderness and middle ear mucosa can be seen as a red, edematous and swollen. So these are clinical manifestation of CSOM. Next, so diagnostic evaluation of CSOM. So the first one is a history collection and physical examination and laboratory studies as culture and sensitivity of a specimen from a fresh perforation or a tympanocentesis may be helpful. Next one is a radiography of the mastoid air cells may be helpful in select cases of suspected mastoiditis. CT scan of the temporal bone may provide an explanation at CT scan reveal bone erosion from cholestatoma, ossicular erosion, etc. MRI, use MRI of the temporal bone and brain if intratemporal and intracranial complications are suspected. And last, audiogram should be performed. Conductive hearing loss is expected, but mixed hearing loss may indicate more extensive disease and should alert the treating physician of impeding complications. So here, a diagnostic evaluation of CSOM. Next, the complication are, so there are mainly three complications of CSOM. First one is a intratemporal. It uh, consists of perforation of tympanic membrane, facial nerve palsy, and acute labyrinthitis. Second one is a 
intracranial which consists the meningitis encephalitis brain abscess otitis hydrocephalus and sigmoid sinus thrombosis and the third one systemic consists of bacteremia septic arthritis or bacterial endocarditis next management of csom as you can see a whole diagram of management of csom now moving forward its detail so the first one is a medical management so the first one is a oral toilet oral toilet is a critical process in the treatment of csom the external auditory canal and tissues lateral to the infected middle ear are often covered with mucosal exudates or disquamous epithelium topically applied preparation cannot penetrate affected tissue until this interposing materials are removed as you can see in a picture traditionally in otolaryngology oral toilet has been achieved using the microscope and micro instrument to mechanically remove such materials for best result oral toilet should be performed 2 to 3 times per day just before the administration of topical antimicrobial agents an oral irrigation is an effective alternative that is often less burdensome for patient and physician a solution of 50% peroxide and 50% sterile water is generally painless and effective 30 to 40 ml of this solution can be irrigated through the external auditory canal using a small syringe or a bulb type aspirator as you can see in a picture the irrigant solution can be allowed to drain out for 5 to 10 minutes prior to instilling the ototopical antimicrobial next one is a using of antibiotics as you can see in a picture there are some topical and systematic antibiotics are used in a treatment of chronic suppurative otitis media such as a ciprofloxacin gentamicin and tobramycin sometimes antibiotics plus steroid therapy for polyps and granulation can be used and there are some oral antibiotics for several infections such as a uh, Uh, sorry severe infections such as uh, cefuroxime cefeclor cefodoxime and cefixime next a quartary procession so quartary is often used to reduce the amount of granulation tissue and to control its formation as the principle of chemical quarterization is that it break up fibrosis and enhance granulation tissue formation and healing at the margin of the perforation Microbiopolar cautery can be used in the clinic but chemical cautery is used more commonly silver nitrate can conveniently can be applied in a form of silver nitrate stick excision of granulation tissue can be accomplished in a clinical with the use of microscope and micro instrument silver nitrate is often used to control bleeding and to enhance efficacy of granulation tissue is removed G- given at a flat surface the epithelium grows at the rate of 1 mm per day next the main important surgical management so the first one is a meringoplasty as you can see in a picture meringoplasty is the closure of the perforation of parts tensa of tympanic membrane when Meringoplasty is combined with removal of scar tissue it is called tympanoplasty the operation is performed with the patient supine and face turned to one side next meringotomy as you can see in a picture a meringotomy sometimes called by other names also called grumet it is a surgical procedure in which a tiny incision is created in eardrum as you can see in a picture to relieve pressure caused by excessive build up of fluid or to drain pus from the middle ear it can be commonly used for draining ear discharge in many cases a small tube as you can see in a picture is inserted into a hole in the ear drum to help maintaining drainage drainage so next one is a tympanoplasty tympanoplasty is the surgical operation performed for reconstruction of the ear drum means tympanic membrane and the small bone of the middle ear ossicles our malleus incus and stapes there are five basic types of tympanoplasty procedure so the first one is called meringoplasty and all, all only involves the restoration of the perforated eardrum by grafting second one is used for tympanic membrane perforation with erosion of the malleus it involves grafting onto the incus or the remains of the malleus 
Third one, tympanoplasty is indicated for destruction of two ossicles with the step is still intact and mobile. It involves placing a graft onto the step is and providing protection for the assembly. Fourth one is used for ossicular destruction which includes all or part of the step is arc. It involves placing a graft onto or around a mobile step is at foot plate. Fifth one is used when the foot plate of the step is is fixed next mastoidectomy as you can see in a picture a mastoidectomy is a procedure performed to remove the mastoid air cells air bubbles in skull near the inner ears there are classification of mastoidectomy traditionally is classified as simple mastoidectomy modified radical mastoidectomy radical mastoidectomy and a fourth procedure tympano mastoidectomy combines the simple mastoidectomy with a middle ear procedure maintaining the posterior and superior canal walls and rest of our osseoculoplasty as vesiculoplasty is a surgical reconstruction of middle ear bone to restore hearing. Prosthetic made of materials such as a Teflon, stainless steel and hydroxypeptides are used to reconnect the vesicles. Laser surgery can be performed for a cholestatoma associated with stapes. Next one is a autolamp procedure, a new procedure involves making a tiny hole in eardrum with a laser. Otolem ventilates or opens the middle ear for several weeks, which may be long enough to cure 75% of ear, ear infection. It reduces the need, need for antibiotics and myringotomy. And last, adenoidectomy. It is a surgical procedure to remove the adenoids which are small organs located in the back of the throat behind the nose where they can't be seen. Adenectomy may be needed if the adenoids are enlarged enough to interfere with eustachian tube function. Removal of the adenoids is an operation in children who have had a persistent middle ear infection. Often this procedure is done after myringotomy and tympanostomy if the surgeon sees that the adenoids are enlarged. Next, nursing management of CSOM. So the first one is a nursing assessment. In this, assessment of a patient with chronic suppurative otitis media include the following that is a physical examination. The patient ear is examined with an otoscope by pulling the ear down and back to straighten the ear canal. History collection assess if there is a history of trauma to the ears affected, a history of cranial or facial defects or any familial history of otitis media. Next one, nursing care for patient with chronic suppurative otitis media include. First one is positioning. Have the patient seat up, raise head on pillows or lie on an affected ear. Administer drugs as prescribed for complete antibiotic therapy or antipyretics. Heat application, apply heating pad or a warm or hot water bottle. Diet, encourage nutritional fluid which boost immunity. Hygiene, teach family members to cover mouths and noses when sneezing or coughing and to wash hands frequently. And monitoring hearing loss, assess hearing ability frequently. After the surgery, there are some post-operative details. With mastoidectomy or tympanoplasty, ear packing can be removed after 3 weeks earlier if infected. Often, ear drops are prescribed to be started 3 weeks after surgery. The packing is then removed 5 to 6 weeks post-operatively, particularly in the lateral graft tympanoplasty which requires additional healing time. The patient receives follow-up care regularly until the canal or cavity is well epithelized. At each follow-up visit, any signs or recurrent cholestatoma are noted. If any hearing reconstruction or osseoculoplasty has been performed, an audiogram is indicated at 3 months. Only the canal uh, is healed, water precaution can be stopped. If a canal wall down mastoidectomy is performed, water entrance may be still be discouraged. The mastered cavity can be irrigated with a solution of alcohol and vinegar as needed. Routine cleaning of the mastered cavity may also be indicated if canal can be performed. So here it's all about chronic suppurative otitis media. Hope you understand very well. 
and we are coming with the new topics so till then thank you so much and if you have any suggestion you can dm us or comment in our comment section so thank you so much